camera set up. Better put my vest on. Hair and makeup, please. Hi, my name is Rob and welcome to my Samsung session. Today I want to talk to you about taking photos of the Milky Way and the stars on your smartphone. Now, since I came up with the idea for this video, a lot of things in the world have changed. Uh, so obviously, depending when you're watching this, um, please be safe, pay attention to what's going on, and remember, sort of by staying apart, we can stay together. So there's gonna be multiple parts to what we need to do with astrophotography. Now we're gonna need to have the right equipment, uh, plan and prepare before we go out, go out and shoot it, and then we need to actually edit the photos afterwards. Taking photos of the Milky Way isn't complicated, but there are gonna be a lot of different things that I talk about. Uh, to make it easy, I'm gonna link in the description below. I'll link to a blog post where I've listed everything that I'm talking about in this video, so you can just reference that later on. Obviously, the most important thing uh, is gonna be the camera or phone you're gonna be taking photos on. The things that I'm gonna be talking about will work on any camera or phone that has uh, manual controls. In this particular case, I'm gonna be using the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. Now, the reason this phone excited me was because the 108 megapixel sensor, when shooting in the Pro mode, uh, treats nine of those pixels as one. And for that low light performance is what really excited me about attempting Milky Way photos. So I went out and I took a number of different sort of test shots and sort of experimented with the settings and that's what you're gonna benefit from today. But for me, it's about getting the right weather and the right location. Uh, if you haven't been out with the camera or phone you're shooting on, allow yourself a, a night out experimenting where you're not trying to get the greatest photo. You're just going out there and playing with the settings to, to dial it in. So we're gonna be going out at night time to take photos of the stars. We're gonna be taking long exposure photos. So the most important thing there is to have something to secure the phone down so it doesn't move and wobble while we're taking a photo. So let's just start by uh, using a tripod. We wanna have the phone secured to something and then that's secured to the tripod. So you can get these tripod heads uh, that work really, really well and they won't move in the wind. You can get other smaller tripods. Uh, just be aware that the more chance it has to wobble or, or move, uh, the, the difficult, more difficult the results will be to get. So have something secure if you can, but anything that will hold the phone for you will work. Now, the second thing you're gonna need to have is a head torch, something that you can see what you're doing at nighttime. Obviously, your phone's gonna be used to take photos of the sky, so the phone, the torch that you might normally use will be busy. Uh, the last thing you're gonna need is something to stay nice and warm going outside, especially in winter is gonna be nice and cool. So uh, make sure you're prepared. You're gonna be standing around, not doing anything for a while while you're taking photos, so dress appropriately. So now we have all of the equipment, sort of understand what we need, something warm, a head torch, the tripod or something to secure the phone while we're taking photos. Now it's really important to talk about the planning stage, which is probably the most important when you wanna try and figure out where the stars will be, uh, where the Milky Way will be, and then obviously worrying about the weather. So now we get to talk about the planning part, and this is probably the most important bit. Uh, let me get out of the way and show you. Uh, the app that I use is actually called PhotoPills. Uh, the reason I use that one is because it allows me to tell me when the sunrise is coming, the sunset, the Milky Way, all those sorts of things, which is amazing for photography. In this particular case, let me just go through here and I'll show you uh, this is the night augmented reality. You'll see that later on when I'm demonstrating outside uh, the Milky Way position. But here we have also the planning area. This planning area allows you to see when the sun's up, when the sun's down, when the moon's up, when the moon's down, and also the position of the Milky Way core, uh, sort of reference to where we are. So we can sort of plan where we'll be, where objects will be, so we can get the sort of photos that we want where we have a subject lining up with the Milky Way core, and we can dial that in and figure out the exact time. Now it's probably really worth mentioning that weather pays a big impact here and not only do you want sort of the sky to be clear, but if you've got any sort of fog in the sky, you can see here that it creates like a sort of a, sort of a softness to the stars. Uh, and also you have um, the moon. Here's some photos I took when I was first experimenting with the S20 and you see the difference between moon and no moon. It makes a big difference to how much sort of light's bouncing around in the sky there. So preferably we want the moon to be down we want a clear sky and we want the Milky Way core, the brightest part, to be exactly where we want it. So tonight I'm gonna to be going out and hopefully there'll be a sort of sand dune uh, with me on top of it there maybe. And the plan will be to line that up with the stars above. So before I go outside, I wanna explain a little bit about the settings we're gonna be using on the phone. It may not be obvious, but um, because the Milky Way is moving throughout the night sky, uh, the Earth is rotating, 
uh, the stars do move, which means we can't use the full 30 second exposure on the S20. We want to limit to around 15 seconds. The wider your lens, the longer you take a photo for, the more narrow the lens, uh, the shorter amount you take photos for, because the stars will move and they'll look blurry even if the focus is correct. So we're going to set our focus for infinity, we'll set our shutter speed for around 15 seconds, uh, we'll set our ISO like up incrementally to we sort of find a spot that we're happy with. I found between 200 to 300 looks pretty good. Um, we want to make sure we're shooting in raw mode uh, so we can edit the photos and the white balance later on. If you want to set the white balance now, that's fine as well, just to see what it looks like. And then the little sort of secret setting is to make sure that you set the two second countdown timer so that when you take a photo, you don't bump the uh, tripod and it's extremely still while it's taking that 15 second photo. Let's get ready, let's get packed, let's get all of our equipment, I'll go outside and uh, I'll see you out there. Okay, so I'm out here, I've got the phone, I've got the tripod, I've got the tripod head. Um, I'm just going to light up the photo pills app now and I'll show you uh, what I'm seeing. But we have plenty of time at the moment and it's perfect weather, there's not much wind, clear skies, so everything is looking good. Okay, so I'm going to have to turn the light off in a second. I want my eyes to adjust to the night sky. But essentially what we're going to do is check the augmented realities in the right spot and then maybe go and mark out a spot where I'm going to stand, maybe using a second uh, light. And I will then um, do a couple of test shots and then all we need to do then is wait for the Milky Way to move into the right position. We need it to be up to about there, I think, based on just my guess. And so what we'll have again is hopefully a mound, this, and hopefully I'll be standing there. It won't be exactly like that, but that's roughly what we're going for. So it's always good to have an idea of what you're trying to do to start with, and then you can always uh, learn from your mistakes and change it as you need to. Whether I use a torch to light this area up or not, I'll be yet to see, um, but we'll see how we go first with getting this. So it looks like I need to wait quite a while here we go. Yeah, we do. So you can sort of see that Milky Way peeking over at the moment. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to turn that light on now and to see what the photo looks like when I've got that light on. Just to see. 15 seconds. So let's have a look and you'll be very surprised. It might be too much even. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? It's looking really good. So now I'm going to experiment with um, half the amount of time. So I'm going to experiment with um, having that light on and counting to, to five. And one, two, Three, four, five, turn the light off. I think I need the camera to go left a little bit and up a little bit. So right now I'm experimenting with the uh, Involometer app. Uh, it's basically constantly trying to press the camera button for us. So I essentially have to go up there and just stand in a few different spots as still as I can um, for as long as I can. Now I'm just visualizing where I need to go from here. Um, looks like straight up from the light, but I'll, I'll double check that in a second. Uh, and then I'll go out and stand in a few shots and just test it, come back, check them and hopefully by that time the Milky Way is in the right spot. It's very dark here, it's very cold. Okay there we are. Um, I think I'm done here. It's very difficult to explain what, what I've been doing but I'll try. Essentially I went to the top of the hill and I was too small so then I came down and used the light that I had down here in different positions and I stood in different positions to project my shadow onto the actual sand dune. Um, I took a lot of combinations. Uh, again, definitely something probably better to be done with uh, a friend. Uh, but if you are on your own and you don't want to try the Involometer app, uh, you can set the 10 second countdown timer and just press the photo button and run into shot. Right now I'm just going to let the camera take a few shots of the stars uh, on its own, just in case I want to animate them or anything later on. That's my main idea. Alrighty, so I'll see you back at my desk where I'll hopefully be nice and warm and I can edit these photos. Okay, so we're back at home, nice and warm. The hardest thing is going to be going through and actually picking which uh, photos we want to edit, probably. There's always one or two that you, you stand out more than others. Uh, in this particular case, we want to make sure that, that the person looks good and we also want to make sure that the um, Milky Way looks good too. So let me just quickly go through these and find the one that I liked. Okay, and you see they've got one with the RAW and one without, so they've got the JPEG and then you've got the RAW file. We want to be editing the RAW file. Now that we've picked the photo we want to, want to edit, we just have to open that up in Lightroom Mobile. Now one of the quick things I didn't mention when I was out there actually was that I was shooting uh, and quickly edited a couple of test shots which showed me there was an issue with the light that I was using, it had this weird colour banding and also um, it allowed me just to check the exposure of the Milky Way when I was out there so I knew my camera settings were, were okay. I uh, highly recommend doing that and it's one of the advantages of having and shooting on a mobile phone. 
Okay, so the edit for this is gonna be pretty simple. The way that I'll break these sort of shots down is because we're doing one single exposure, uh, and essentially the main exposure set for the Milky Way, we, we modified the torch to be adequate uh, for the settings we were using. So we dimmed it or brightened it or turned it on for shorter, etc. So uh, when we take these photos, we expect there to be a bit of a difference. The sky's gonna be dark and the foreground is gonna be light. Um, so what I try to do generally is actually fix the Milky Way first because it's kind of the thing we were exposing for. And what I do is just grab the exposure and drag that all the way up until I can start to see the Milky Way there. You can see it's start to pop out. And obviously by doing that, we're gonna um, overexpose this foreground. So very, very simply, um, we'll fix that by using a gradient here. So selective edited, gradient, drag that up, um, and I'll just put that kind of where the sand dune finishes. And obviously this one is gonna be the opposite. We need to bring the exposure back down again to kind of where it is uh, there. Now the rest of this editing is going to be uh, fixing up the sort of distortion from um, the uh, lens there. It's going to be putting a radial filter over the Milky Way to make it pop out even more. So I might even do that first just to show you. I'm not going to bore you with the step-by-step -step of the edit. I'm sort of showing you the principles of what you would do. Now that's nice and feathered already. So what we can do here is just uh, maybe bump up the exposure a little bit. And then depending on your preference, um, remember I said before we can edit the white balance later on. Jump over here into the, the color, and you can adjust this to make it look sort of more natural or more surreal, depending on really what your taste is. And again, you can use that selective editing to split up the sky versus the foreground. Um, in this particular case, I am going to be, pro I, I prefer a cooler sort of night shot, but then I do enjoy um, a bit of sort of magenta in there, I like that. And what I can do, uh, use that here, I can actually change the color of just that area and add a bit of sort of in there. You can see there's a bit, of, a bit too much brightness behind me there, but I might just brush that in quickly. And just, just really roughly darken this sort of foreground area. It's not really what we want to draw attention to. And I can drop the highlights of that too. Maybe I can straighten myself up just using the rotation tool a little bit. So you still get that Milky Way nice in there. And then we'll just check our crop because we want to do a four or five crop for Instagram, for social media. Now after I played with the transform tool a little bit, I sort of stopped and just looked at the photo, darkened it, remembering it is a night photo, and I've gone through the curve here and just gone from the highlights down to the shadows, tweaking the different ranges to suit kind of that contrast that I want in the shot. Um, I noticed that the colors are, are a little bit out, I noticed that it didn't look like it was sand anymore, so I've gone back to my original gradient there and just added a bit more warmth for the foreground. Uh, and that's really it, um, there's a before and after. And that's good, I'm happy with that. So I'll export that and uh, let's jump back up off the desk. Okay, well hopefully you learned something. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. Obviously we went through all the equipment, the planning, uh, the shooting and then the editing afterwards. Uh, there's a lot there to, to comprehend. So I'm sure if you need to go back and rewatch parts of it. I didn't go to, into every single part in depth. I wanted to give a broad sort of uh, view of what was going on. So if you have any questions and you want to know more information about any particular part, uh, leave a comment below and I'll come in and answer the questions for you. Or you can find me on Instagram at Rob Mullally where I can answer your questions there as well. All right, well, I guess that's it. Um, it's a wrap. Probably take this vest off now, I guess. <laughs>